welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Richard Wilbur, who recently passed away. He passed away in October of 2017. And in fact, today when I'm recording this, it is Sunday, October 14th, and it is the one-year anniversary of his passing. So it seemed like an appropriate time to uh, record a poem by Richard Wilbur. He was certainly one of the most important American poets uh, of his generation of the last hundred years. Um, He was one of the few poets of the 20th century to be marked particularly by um, the traditional forms in which he worked and at times which which he reveled in, I think is a fair way of putting it. In 1987, Richard Wilbur was appointed as the second poet laureate consultant in poetry to the Library of Congress. And then in 1957 and in 1989, he received the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry, which of course is quite an accomplishment. He also won the Robert Frost Medal in 1996. The poem I'm going to read today was from a 1956 collection called Things of This World, a collection he dedicated to his children. And this was one of the collections that won the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry, and then he also won the National Book Award. This was both of those and uh, were given to him in 1957. This is not what you would call an easy poem, I don't think. But it is a lovely poem, and it is challenging in the right sort of ways, I believe. It is called Love Calls Us to the Things of This World. This is how it goes. The eyes open to a cry of pulleys, And spirited from sleep, the astounded soul hangs for a moment, bodiless and simple as false dawn. Outside the open window, the morning air is all awash with angels. Some are in bedsheets, some are in blouses, some are in smocks. But truly, there they are. Now they are rising together in calm swells of halcyon feeling, filling whatever they wear with the deep joy of their impersonal breathing. Now they are flying in place, conveying the terrible speed of their omnipresence, moving and staying like white water. And now, of a sudden, they swoon down into so rapt a quiet that nobody seems to be there. The soul shrinks from all that it is about to remember, from the punctual rape of every blessed day, and cries, Oh, let there be nothing on earth but laundry, nothing but rosy hands and the rising steam and clear dances done in the sight of heaven. Yet, as the sun acknowledges with a warm look the world's hunks and colors, the soul descends once more in bitter love to accept the waking body, saying now in a changed voice as the man yawns and rises, Bring them down from their ruddy gallows. Let there be clean linen for the backs of thieves. Let lovers go fresh and sweet to be undone, and the heaviest nuns walk in a pure floating of dark habits, keeping their difficult balance. See what I mean? It's, n- it's not an, an easy poem to interpret, but it is a lovely poem in terms of how it's crafted and the way Richard Wilbur puts language together. The title of this poem is taken from St. Augustine. Richard Wilbur wrote, the following. Plato, St. Teresa, and the rest of us in our degree have known that it is painful to return to the cave, to the earth, to the quotidian. Augustine says it is love that brings us back. Of course, you may also recognize from 1 John chapter 2 the line, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. So Wilbur seems to be flipping this biblical call, this biblical injunction, on his head. He seems to be saying that love calls us to the things of this world. So one of the things that I've been wondering as I've been reading it and thinking about it is, is he critiquing the concept that we are supposed to love not the world and neither the things that are in the world? Or is he offering to us a different way of thinking about that verse, a more profound way than what is on the surface? Is he suggesting that there's more to that than what seems to be there on an initial read. Now, this this podcast, with the limited amount of time that I that I have here, is not really um, the place to to dive too deeply into this, into what Richard Wilbur is saying about that particular verse and about Saint Augustine. But it does seem like, and you can read about this online. I recommend googling it. It does seem that there is a contrast in the first half of the poem 
um, where it seems to be about the spirit world, the spiritual world. And the second half of the poem, which seems to be about the physical part of the world. After searching this poem, I read that I read this line from um, Frank Littler, and this is at um, the English.illinois.edu. You can find this with a Google search. But he writes that the first part of the poem is dominated by the use of words which convey a spiritual texture. And I really like that word texture. I think the greatest poems convey a, a texture of some kind. So the first part of the poem conveys a spiritual texture. The second part seems to stress the what, what Frank Littler calls the actual. You could also say the physical, but he talks about the hunks and colors, the waking body, the ruddy gallows. Um, these things emphasize the actual world as opposed to um, the angels of the first part. But this is also the kind of poem that rewards simply looking at the variety of the words that the poet uses. Wilbur is a careful poet. He's a precise poet, and he's a formalist. So he's using the word choices in very specific ways. And I'm not here on this show to, to um, determine what every line means, what the use of every word sug suggests. Um, and I'm not here to interpret it per se. But I do think it is worth noting the, the various words that he uses um, and the images that they're tied to. Bruce Michelson, uh, in a 1991 book called Wilbur's Poetry, Music in a Scattering Time, says that in this poem, the poet is at once perfect seriousness and festivity. Its language founded ironies being play, much as uh, historian and medievalist John Huizinga defines it in its highest state, play as the exuberant celebration of mystery. I love that, that words uh, allow the exuberant celebration of mystery, and that that's what what uh, Wilbur is doing here. So as you can see through some of these comments that I'm sharing, I mean, there's a lot going on in this poem. If you are interested, dive in deeper, um, explore some of the writing online, some of the books that have been written about Richard Wilbur's poetry. And of course, I hope you'll just spend some time thinking about this poem. In order for you to do that a little bit better, I will read it one more time for you and uh, we'll see where it takes you. Richard Wilbur's love calls us to the things of this world. The eyes open to a cry of pulleys, and spirited from sleep, the astounded soul hangs for a moment, bodiless and simple as false dawn. Outside the open window, the morning air is all awash with angels. Some are in bedsheets, some are in blouses, some are in smocks, but truly there they are. Now they are rising together in calm swells of halcyon feeling, filling whatever they wear with the deep joy of their impersonal breathing. Now they are flying in place, conveying the terrible speed of their omnipresence, moving and staying like white water. And now, of a sudden, they swoon down into so rapt a quiet that nobody seems to be there. The soul shrinks from all that it is about to remember, from the punctual rape of every blessed day, and cries, Oh, let there be nothing on earth but laundry, nothing but rosy hands in the rising steam and clear dances done in the sight of heaven. Yet, as the sun acknowledges with a warm look the world's hunks and colors, the soul descends once more in bitter love to accept the waking body, saying now in a changed voice as the man yawns and rises, Bring them down from their ruddy gallows. Let there be clean linen for the backs of thieves, let lovers go fresh and sweet to be undone, and the heaviest nuns walk in a pure floating of dark habits, keeping their difficult balance. This has been The Daily Poem. Thank you for listening. Be back tomorrow with another poem for you.